I'm Callan Kroniger from the Department of Nutrition, and today we're going to talk about the mobilization of glycogen. Glycogen is your stored energy in primarily two tissues, in your liver and in your muscle. It's used as a short-term fix. In the liver, it's between breakfast and lunch, lunch and dinner. You mobilize your glycogen to release glucose for the rest of the body and maintain blood glucose levels. The muscle uses glycogen during exercise, very intense exercise. If you need to get out of a burning building, the glycogen is mobilized to get you out of that building. The stimulus during fasting, so we're going to talk about the liver. The stimulus during fasting, your fasting hormone, is glucagon. Glucagon is elevated. It's released from the pancreas. It binds to its receptor. It activates the G-coupled proteins. It generates the synthesis of cyclic AMP from ATP. Cyclic AMP will bind to the regulatory subunit of PKA, which is your cyclic AMP-dependent protein kinase. When cyclic AMP binds to the regulatory subunits, it releases that catalytic subunit. So I drew that, again, just up here to remind you. During fasting, PKA is going to do three things. The first thing it's going to do is phosphorylate glycogen phosphorylase kinase, turning it on. That will phosphorylate glycogen phosphorylase, or as I call this, the Pac-Man enzyme and it gets turned on, and now glycogen phosphorylase will cleave one glucose molecule at a time to produce glucose 1-phosphate. If you're mobilizing your glycogen, you want to turn off the synthesis. So that's the second thing that PKA will do. It will phosphorylate glycogen synthase, turning it off. The PKA, the third thing it'll do, is phosphorylate the inhibitor that's bound to protein phosphatase 1. When this is phosphorylated, the inhibitor um, inactivates protein phosphatase 1, turning it off. So this is your fasted response. Now if we switch over to the fed response, when insulin is high, insulin really works by uh, activating this phosphatase. So insulin will cleave the phosphate off of the inhibitor. So insulin is going to increase protein phosphatase 2. That protein phosphatase 2 cleaves this phosphate. Now, protein phosphatase is on, and this phosphate, phosphatase is going to work at each one of these phosphates. So protein phosphatase 1 will cleave off the phosphate. Now it turns it on, and you'll synthesize glycogen. It'll cleave the phosphates in the mobilization pathway and thus turn it off. So the wonderful hormonal stimulus of glucagon insulin regulate these pathways. Um, and in the fed state, you want to take the glucose that's extra, store it in your liver for a rainy day. All right, the muscle is slightly different. The muscle does not respond to glucagon. The hormonal stimulus is epinephrine. It does the same thing. It binds to its receptor, activates the G-coupled proteins, and increases cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP will bind to the regulatory subunits and activate PKA. In the muscle, it'll do the exact same things. It'll phosphorylate glycogen synthase, turning it off. It'll phosphorylate glycogen phosphorylase kinase, turning it on. This kinase will phosphorylate the Pac-Man enzyme, glycogen phosphorylase, and this gets turned on. Now you mobilize your glycogen. The, the difference of the muscle metabolism is that it also responds to calcium and AMP. Both of those are increased during uh, muscle contraction. Calcium itself can bind to the delta subunit of this kinase. Um, there's four subunits. There's an alpha, a beta, a delta, I'm sorry, gamma, and then a delta. The delta is called comodulin. Um, calcium can bind directly to that part of the subunit and turn it on. AMP can bind directly to the Pac-Man enzyme, glycogen phosphorylase, and turn it on. You can have both regulations, the phosphorylation from epinephrine and calcium and AMP, or you can have just calcium and AMP. All this would mobilize your glycogen, turning it on so that it can go down the glycolytic pathway and give you ATP.